spacecraft did not crash in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. You know flat earthers, I guarantee it. But you don't know who they are because they're afraid of talking about it. This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system. Hello and welcome to the 11th annual Subliminal Deception Podcast. Your weekly dose of conspiracy theory bullshit. My name is Cody. I almost said my name is Phil, <laughs> but I'm joined by my co-host, Phil. How are you, buddy? Doing good, Cody. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. We're actually, uh, we're going to let people in on the secret. We are doing multiple recordings while you're still visiting here. You're not actually staying here for two weeks straight. I don't know. Could you handle that? Two weeks straight? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bank account might be stretched out a little bit, but I wouldn't, wouldn't miss work that much. So <laughs> no, absolutely they, they not. might miss me, but I, we need to talk about the other conspiracy theory that on the commercial we just saw that it says a hundred thousand people hate their job. And I'm like, I think it's a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that seems a little low to me. Maybe they mean in Minneapolis, a hundred thousand people hate <laughs> well, their job. Well, it was a tequila commercial. Yeah. So I don't know what they're trying to say but i i feel like it's do you think there's a scale between hating your job and like tolerating your job i think that most people claim (laughs) to love their job because if they didn't they'd go fucking nuts (laughs) like if they realized how much they actually hated their job like they couldn't take it anymore i i completely agree with you i mean if Maybe it's a good thing. Like, if you can convince yourself that you love your job, and I'm not saying some people don't love their job, but let's say, let's take my job. If I could convince myself I'm excited to go in and make a mega corporation a shitload of money, maybe it would actually make me like the job. Like, it's a psychological thing. And you'd be given your pettance. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, man, I love this place so much. I love when my boss yells at me, and I love when he tells me I'm not doing the right thing, and I love when he's... I just love it all. Yeah. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I think that when universe, universal basic income mm-hmm. comes around, um, which I- is in the future, I do believe it's going to happen. Not in our future, but, you yeah. know. But, like... <laughs> I think that people, you're only going to have to work at a job that you really love to do. Hmm. Like maybe there's still going to be some like administrators around. There's still obviously going to be artists, writers, Hmm. people who do shit like we do, creative. Yeah, yeah, Like if you have a creative job, you don't do a creative job because like you have to. It's not like – No. It's not like some comedian is, you know, oh, I can't stand going to the fucking club tonight, blah, blah, blah. If if they didn't like it, they wouldn't do it, you know? That's true. So you're saying like it'd be ideal if your hobby morphed into a job is like the ideal thing. Well, I think that's the ideal for everyone. <laughs> I mean, okay. Do you think like let's get our own conspiracy here? If we got big enough, where like podcasting was like your job, do you think you'd get to the point where you're like, oh my god, I fucking hate this? No, no, you don't think so. I mean, I feel like the. I feel like. The, us making a podcast every week is not that big of a deal, especially this one, because it's we can do the research and stuff fairly rapidly. But if the people who have a podcast and then start touring a lot, I feel like the touring could maybe get a little straining. Yeah, that could definitely get straining. I mean, here's the thing. We only do one day a week. It yeah. takes us about what? It takes you or me like three hours total to like Some, write up everything. Yeah, depending um, on the minus subject. Minus research. Depending on the subject, yeah. I mean, if we had an everyday podcast where it was like, okay, we've got to write three hours every day. We've got to research three hours every day. I don't know day. if anybody does that, though. Like research podcasts every day, I don't, I don't think anybody really does. Like talk show ones. Oh, I'm saying if we were <laughs> actually <laughs> making money off this oh. every day. Well, like a like a five day a week job, ah, uh, would you hate it then? That's what I'm pro- trying to get at. Probably after a while, yeah, I would hate it then. I would actually love it, but I would need to be doing a different show. I couldn't I, stand doing like 
I love conspiracies, but honestly, <laughs> there's only so many conspiracies out there. Like that well, that well. If you were up. doing five days a week conspiracy theories, you would run out of subjects probably within a year. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. But the other thing is, it's like if you're doing it five days a week, why aren't you just on the radio? <laughs> Exactly. That's a fucking radio show. I don't see how some of those radio hosts can do some of them like uh, the five day a week every morning for I, four hours. I like, think, what do I, they talk about? I think you just you just have to like to talk. To be honest, I've like if obviously you were on our other our, my other podcast, Mumble About Podcast, yesterday, and like we all had. When it's four of us, like the conversation's pretty easy, but doing that for four hours a day, five days a week might get a little, <laughs> a little rough. Well, some of those guys have like two or three people, and they're mm. all friends, and they're really funny. Well, you hope yeah. that they're friends, but <laughs> they're all funny, and it's just like they have an easy time. Yeah, because there's a uh, there's a morning show that I love, and it's syndicated. Um, but it in, is in Phoenix. In Phoenix, yeah. Um, what it, is it? A sports or is it? They do everything. They talk everything. about a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, so basically, it's three of them. So they have a lot of shit to talk about. They're always like, if someone's starting to drag down, another person jumps in, and mm. just like we were doing yesterday. Yeah. If yeah. someone starts to like drag down, like running out of things to say, someone else changes the topic <laughs> and jumps in there. Right. But if you're just yourself talking to yourself, yeah. How do you even know if it's not interesting? But yeah, that's you gotta, a good point. You got to be a master of your craft. If you know. well. We can probably inform everybody we are not <laughs> radio people, probably, and probably never will be. So that mm-hmm. mystery will be, I don't know, maybe somebody from the radio will contact us and tell us that we're a couple of fucking idiots. But uh, should we dive in the theory this week, Phil? Yeah, sure. Now, this theory, I, I've i heard of it, but I didn't know the scope of it or like where they get the ideas from. But it's actually, I found quite interesting, and that is the hollow moon theory. So, Phil, initial impressions, don't give any information away. What do you, like, yes or no, do you think this holds any credence, just to start off? (laughs) It is possible that the moon... Are you giving it the Neil deGrasse Tyson 50-50? It's not (laughs) 50-50. No, it's not 50-50. I am saying that, like, in the heart of... You know, the tinfoil hat wears, <laughs> I am just going to say it is possible. Okay. Even well, if it's 1% possible. <laughs> well, we're going to start off with the nerdy part of learning a little bit about the moon because really the moon's kind of mysterious. And actually, you know what? Why don't we start off with the the leading theories of what scientists believe the moon is? I don't, I'll do one, you do one maybe. So I'll start off with basically they believe that the moon was birthed from the earth, right? Like it was a a molten planet and it just kind of, it was a conjoined twin kind of shit it out or whatever. And then it's kind of got caught in the the rotational sphere, the gravitational sphere of the earth. And it's kind of just always been there, right? Um, And It coalesced into another ball outside of the earth. Right, right. And then the second theory is basically what you told me is that they believe it could have been a rogue planet that crashed into Earth and then kind of got stuck in its gravitational pull. Correct? Am I hitting that right? Uh, Yeah, kind of. So there's a – they call it Planet X. Um, Mm. Basically during this time, they think that there was hundreds of inner – like – inter uh, Jupiter planets that were like rotating around the sun and one of these planets and earth actually collided. Now mm. what happened is both of them collided. Um, the planet X actually hit earth and hit it at an angle kind of like grazed it. Like you could imagine like if you were trying to peel the skin off an orange, <laughs> you would go in at that angle. Yeah. So that's what they kind of think happened. Ah. And then the skin of the earth actually peeled off got caught up in the rotation of the earth all of the iron from what was left basically a disc formed around the earth all of the iron yeah um was heavier so that all kind of came back to the earth Mm. and everything that was left coalesced into the moon and remained molten Mm. and which is why like for meteor strikes you see like the older ones have like this really dark yeah um well, kind of. We're gonna, it was because it was there was it was actually like magma. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna come back to that because it's actually a big thing in regards to the hollow moon moon theory is the craters, which we'll go into. But yeah, those are basically the two main scientific ones, or the Christian scientists. God put it there. If you want to believe that, um, that's your whatever. Whoever, if you want to believe that, that's fine. Um, so oh, there's well, there's three. You want me to just throw them out there? Oh, just fire away. What do you think? Okay, so the original one was the Ketcher's Mint theory, in which like a planet that was like. The moon basically was an asteroid from the yeah. asteroid belt, and it got caught up in the Earth's gravitational it's orbit. It's not well. I mean, that one's not that far off of from what you said, really. Like a rogue thing coming in. Oh yeah, but it's different as how it was. Born. Well, yeah. And then there's also the third one, or the second one, which you <laughs> said, which was when the Earth cooled. Yeah. The Earth was really hot, and then when it cooled, it kind of popped. Like uh, you can imagine, like how heat expansion and you know, cooling. Yeah, yeah. It popped off a lot of crap off of the surface of the earth, <laughs> and then that formed a disc, and then coalesced yeah, yeah, into yeah, the yeah. moon. So those All are right. the main three. Well, now hopefully, no more than fifty percent of people shut this off after getting too nerdy about the moon. <laughs> but we got a few more nerdy moon facts, and I promise it's kind of cool. Basically, what we're saying is the whole the whole premise behind the theory is yes. While well, though the scientists believe that's probably what happened. Nobody can prove for certain that that's what happened, okay? So you got to keep that in mind when talking about the hollow moon theory. So the distance between the Earth and its in its moon averages about 238,900 miles. The diameter of the moon is 2,160 miles. The moon's mass, the amount of material that makes up the moon, is about one-eighth of Earth's Earth's mass, God, that's a mouthful there. So you kind of get a, a scope of how big the moon is. Gravity on the moon is one-sixth of that of the Earth. If you weigh 132 pounds on Earth, you would weigh 22 pounds on the moon. So that's kind of neat. I also learned that the moon, it doesn't have obviously an atmosphere like Earth does, but it has like a very, very slight, slight atmosphere. That's why like uh, they're explaining like the dust doesn't just fly off of it or whatever. It's just kind of neat. So the the moon orbits the Earth at about 2,300 miles per hour and takes roughly 27.3 days to complete a cycle. Now, you explained to me the rotation that I actually didn't really know initially about how the er, the moon goes around the Earth. The best way I can describe it is, do you remember those fucking uh, things you used to wrap around your leg as a kid? The hopscotch things with the wheel? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's basically what the moon is. It's fixed, so it can't, it can't, like, it just keeps going around. Imagine that going around your leg. It keeps facing you the whole time. Or, like, the Earth is a rope around the moon. It just keeps circling it around. It's the best way you can describe it. So it's not really, it's rotating, but not like Earth rotates, right? Well, yeah, the moon does spin, but it's, it, it's... When I was watching the diagrams, it's not really a... It spins, but not like we think of like the Earth spinning. No, yeah. It spins and rotates so that we always see the same face. Yeah. We never yeah. see the moon spinning. Yeah. 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 Which is why people so don't think it spins. The uh, the percentages i seen was that we always see the face and it will rotate enough so you can see 9% of each of the edges of it at any given time. So 41% of the moon is constantly in darkness, basically. Mm-hmm. So, which is kind of, uh, nobody probably cared anyway. So the <laughs> <laughs> this is all getting to the point of, yeah. it could be fake. Right. Now the, the high tide and low tide, obviously most people know that's affected by the moon. Um, basically when the moon rotates, they, they think that when it's facing that side of the ocean, it's almost has just enough gravitational pull to pull the water in that direction, which in, makes the water higher, makes the water lower, right? Mm -hmm. um now uh, what i found was interesting that this actually affect or like the moon actually affects animals behaviors more so coral actually grows during a full moon did you know that no i didn't like it prefers to grow during a full moon certain creatures like the lion say it usually hunts at night but when it's a full moon, it will kill during the day because it finds it easier to kill prey than it is during a full moon with the light shining down, which I thought was kind of neat, actually. Yeah. 
My uh, my grandma was actually affected by the full moon. <laughs> okay, did go... she turn into a werewolf? Uh, kind of. Um, <laughs> she became a uh, a phone warrior back a then. A phone warrior? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She used to dust off that uh, phone card <laughs> every 27 days and just go Wait, ham. Wait, she called you only on full moons? Oh, yeah. We knew Is that... there any reason? Uh, we don't know. She just went crazy and started calling us. <laughs> Maybe that was like her internal sundial, I guess. Like she's like, okay, the moon's up. I better call. It's been about twenty-seven days. I better check in on uh, Phil and his family. Wow, that's yeah. She weird. just had to let it out. Is that the know? is that the crazy grandma? That's the crazy grandma, that's not crazy. the cool grandma. The crazy, grandma. the crazy yeah. grandma. Okay, I almost thought you were gonna say when she seen a full moon, she had to get like extra plastered or something. <laughs> oh, no, no. <it, laughs> let me get this. Yeah, it also had to do with alcohol. <laughs> Okay. But she went extra crazy. <laughs> Let's just say she liked to party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Loved it. So have you heard before that there's theories when, um, say, since we're made up, let's air quotes here, made up of 70% water, that the tide will affect us as well internally. Have you ever heard this before? No, I'm, I've never heard You've never that. heard that? No. Like, say during a full moon, people are usually in a worse mood. You've never heard that before? No. So basically, um, a lot of people do believe that just like, like our, the, our internal waters being pulled by the gravitational pull of the moon or whatever, but that's anybody who knows the water molecules are buried in your blood cells. So you're not tech. I mean, you're made up of water, but not technically, you know what I'm saying? You're not like a fucking walking river. So keep that in mind. They've actually had scientific studies. The full moon People claim that they have epileptic seizures during a full moon, or like the moon's so bright it intensifies it and it causes them to have seizures. There's no credence to that. That's bullshit, okay? There's also, like I said, people believe that mental asylums during a full moon, people's lunacy is increased. That is also false. Nothing happens during a full moon. (laughs) Crazy people don't get crazier, okay? Now, the other one... They believe that women's menstruation uh, kicks in during a full moon. Have you ever heard this? I have. Okay, yeah. so um, that's bullshit too. Keep that in mind. But they did have one interesting study that most women menstruate about two weeks before um, the full moon. So it was about 40% of them. That could just be a coincidence though. So ladies, don't blame your menstruation on the moon at all. Well, those cycles are actually like about the same amount of time as yeah. like a full moon. So it's right. It's, it, they get they get equated a lot. I think it's know. just a coincidence. It's basically that's what I've surmounted from it anyway. Okay, now a little bit more about the moon's surface. The airless lunar surface bakes in the sun at up to 243 degrees Fahrenheit for two weeks at a time. The lunar day lasts about a month. Then, then for an equal period, the same spot in the dark, the dark side cools to about negative 272 degrees Fahrenheit. Which one would you rather have to endure, Phil? Well, you know, I've always said you can cover up, but you can't, you can only take so much off, so. Could you, is there enough Columbia gear for negative 272 degrees? You know, I mean, you throw on that old starter jacket and you get, you know, put some... Put some uh, shopping bags over your feet, so right. you, you know? Right. Mom's old trick. <laughs> the rocks and soil brought back by Apollo missions are extremely dry. The moon has no in- indigenous water. However, the moon is bombarded by water-laden comets and meteoroids. Most of the water is lost in space, but some is trapped in permanently shadowed areas near both the poles of the moon. So that's kind of neat. The general belief is that the moon is similar to the earth in which it has cores, essentially. The diagram that I've seen is essentially, it looks like the core is solid iron with hints of sulfur and other elements. I'm pretty sure this is all a theory too. They don't actually know what the moon's core looks like. Um, And then they believe around that iron core is a partially melted circle of more uh, like kind of molten iron and then from that is a lithosphere that extends about 310 miles to the outer core and i couldn't really find what they think is that's made of do you have any idea no i really. i don't I mean it it's seemed just like, it seemed like they didn't know what the hell that was and then obviously around that you have the dusty surface that we see so 
I don't know necessarily how they came to the conclusions outside of using the theory that you said that it was an iron asteroid or whatever, iron planet that hit it. Take well, that from what you will. They also, I know that they can, um, they do like tests to see like whenever like any kind of seismic tests, they can actually. We're going to go into that. Oh, okay. We go all into that. That's a huge part of the theory. All right, then cut this Don't get out. too yeah. nerdy here on us yet. Have you heard of the hollow earth? Yeah, I've Hello. heard of I mean, we're going to get it. We're <laughs> definitely diving into that bitch eventually. But uh, Saving that one for a special day. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one has more like Jesus implications to it. I mm. could be wrong. but um, So I believe the first mention of a hollow earth dates back to 1694. Now, the first mention of the hollow moon is from H.G. Wells, pretty famous author. Um, his book... The first men in the moon, that's what it was called. They encountered, quote, great beasts, monsters of mere fatness, that they dove moon calves and five foot high selenites. (laughs) They are captured by aliens and taken within the moon itself, the characters within their book. So it's basically they are on the moon, they get captured by moon calves, taken into the alien planet, and then, of course, you can't stop good Americans, and then they escape, so... Um, I tried to like, I wanted to get a good quote from the book or something, but it's just like, it's kind of hard to read. Mm. It's not a very fun read. I found. Yeah. Uh, I mean, H.G. Wells is obviously one of the biggest, like, yeah, yeah but you yeah. got to realize it was, it was written a long time ago. <laughs> it's kind of 1901. Is that a while ago? Yeah. A little, it's a few, <laughs> it's a few minutes ago, you know, it's but it, it makes you, corner. it kind of makes you wonder like was it just come? Out, did that just come out of his creative mind, or did he hear it from somewhere else? Kind of makes you think about it. Well, I mean, you can't discount like somebody who, like, creative people. Yeah, they they yeah. have the ability just to like make shit up like yeah. that. Like, because I mean, technically, at that in 1901, they had not really much of an idea what the hell the moon was. So why couldn't it be some fucking I don't know what, whatever. All right, so Apollo 11 landed on July 20th, 1969, and Neil Armstrong obviously became the first person to walk on the moon's surface, if you believe that. Supposedly. Supposedly. We got to say allegedly, supposedly. If you believe he was the first man to do it, <laughs> or if you believe that uh, they win it all. So yeah, I... Double, double conspiracy. Phil, there. what does NASA stand for? Uh, National Aeronautic Space. <laughs> no, never a straight answer, okay? <laughs> yeah. Neil, we're on to you, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> who who did they, who's like, uh, who do they suspect filmed it? It was Stanley Kub- Kubrick Stanley, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He filmed it, and apparently there's like, we'll probably, we're obviously going to cover that eventually, but I think there's supposed to be hints in The Shining or something about it. Whatever. I don't think he's that fucking clever. Anyway, no. The same year. I'm ne- pretty sure if he left any hints, he'd be <laughs> have an accident. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Oh, you mean the government would wipe him out? Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> now, I actually didn't know this, but that exact same year that they first landed on the moon, they launched Apollo 12, four months after Apollo 11 on November 11th, 1969. Are you familiar with this flight at all? Uh, not really. Okay. Not as much as... The problem is it's sandwiched between 11 and 13. Right, so. right. And I think that's what we're going to find out is that's kind of where the conspiracy theory starts to like gain a little traction because it seems like, what are you hiding, government? What are you hiding here? So Commander Charles Pete Conrad and Lunar Module Pilot Alan L. Bean... Uh, They obviously went to the moon, landed, walked on the surface. Now, their mission was to set up three seismic sensors to test lunar vibrations and also set up sensors to test solar wind flux and magnetic fields like you were kind of talking about previously. Mm -hmm. I didn't want us to spoil it. For some reason, um, NASA then decided for them to return to space and launch their rocket liftoff stage to crash into the surface of the moon to test the lunar vibrations. Now, when it crashed in there, it hit the surface of the moon with the force of a one-ton TNT bomb. That's a big-ass... I I was kind of wondering this. You know how 
have you seen like the debunked Star Wars things where they're like, you know, when they, they say they're fighting in space and there's explosions everywhere, like that can't actually happen in space because there's no oxygen. Oh, yeah. The, I, yeah. I, I was kind of wondering, like, if this thing's hitting the moon, what did it, did it just kind of crash in there? Did like anything happen? Kind of makes you wonder. I imagine it would have uh, made a little bit of a crater. Hmm. And dust would have flown just kinda, out. Just yeah. kind of, sh- I kind of would have liked to see that, but I don't think they're ever going to do that again. So now here's where we start to get into the conspiracy. When this bitch hit it, and NASA was listening, something happened that really tripped them out. The moon rang like a bell. That's how they described. That's how NASA described it for over an hour. Like, it just kept ringing like that. Did you... Have you heard that before? I have heard this. Yeah, yeah. So, it's really... And obviously, that's where people are like, okay, it would only ring like that if it was hollow. Mm-hmm. So, why is it ringing like that? I know some metals, if there is metal in there, it can ring like a tuning fork, I guess. So, I th- I found that kind of strange. What's your impression so far? Yeah. I mean, obviously, if it was a solid body... Um, the waves, it's not like earth, uh, earth, obviously it's molten in the middle, Hmm. you know, all the, um, the waves don't exactly go all the way through. Say allegedly, allegedly, allegedly molten, allegedly molten in the middle. Sorry, (laughs) flat earthers. Don't bomb my house. No, that's the hollow earthers. Oh, hollow earthers. If the earth is hollow, there ain't no molten metal in there. Shit. I'm getting my fucking uh, (laughs) conspiracies mixed up here. (laughs) My, here's like, the problem. My shill paycheck didn't show up. You're like week. a fucking student from Pittsburgh right now, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if the moon was hollow, I could see it like banging like ringing. a drum. For, yeah. yeah, ringing like a bell for. But, I mean, if it's a solid mass like we suppose it is, like, unless you're saying that possibly that iron core mm. is. Like ringing back and forth inside of the the center of the moon, possibly that what, could cause it. To what ring. if it like it didn't actually ha- like? What if it was like a hair bit hollow, like a tiny bit hollow, and it didn't actually have an iron core? Maybe that'd be just enough to like make a ring, or or I don't know. It's just weird. It's just like really weird. Um, I did, I wonder if there's like audio. I didn't even look if there's like audio clips you could listen to and hear what the moon sounded like when it was ringing. No. I'm sure it's all computer readouts. Pro- oh, they, yeah, yeah, you know. probably. So then um, I also learned about something called moonquakes. Have you ever heard of this? No, I've never heard of moonquakes. <laughs> Sounds like a little Debbie dessert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then actually these could be different flavors of said little Debbie dessert. So we'll start off with deep moonquakes. So what these are, um, apparently they're just quakes that happen deep below the surface of the moon. Pretty self-explanatory. The next one is meteor impact vibrations. Pretty self-explanatory. Then they have thermal moon quakes. All that is is when the shadowed part gets heated by the sun, you know, causes a reaction. Which actually kind of makes sense, like if you're warping metal and all of that or shit. Going from negative 200 to positive <laughs> 200. Yeah, I could see. That'll do it. Yeah. It's like, have you ever... I, I used to be really bad at this. Like, you cook with a pan and you just immediately <laughs> throw it, it in the water. Sink. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next time you cook, you're like, why won't this pan sit straight? <laughs> yeah. It's, don't do that. Let it cool down first. Your flat bottom pan, like, turns into a wok. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we used, to, we used to work at that restaurant and, like, people would throw ice cubes in, like, the deep fryer? Oh, Fucking yeah. Fucking shoot shit everywhere. Yeah. Fucking assholes. And the final one, shallow moon quakes, which is just quakes on the on the surface, more or less, um, higher up in the surface. All right, so the next thing is in 1970, I'm not even going to try to pronounce these Russian scientists' name because I'm terrible at that. Um, they are from the Soviet Ac- Academy of Sciences, and they developed an advanced hypothesis that the moon is a spaceship created by unknown beings – the article was entitled, Is the Moon a, the Creation of an Alien Intelligence? Question mark, and was published in Sputnik, the Soviet equivalent of Reader's Digest. The Soviet equivalent of BuzzFeed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I can't even remember. Isn't Reader's Digest like just... 
Is it a Christian book now? Or no, a Christian magazine? Reader's Digest. It's kind of like where you like basically anyone can submit like their little short oh, stories or whatever okay. they want to like opinion op eds <laughs> type deals. I rem- do you remember? Was it in Catholic school we had to sell magazines? Yeah. Is that it? I always remember everyone's like, fuck, fuck it. Just give me Reader's Digest. You know, I'm trying to support kids. I guess I read this horse shit ass magazine, Reader's Digest. I guess maybe some people like it. Yeah, definitely nowadays they would not send like eight, nine, ten year olds out to random people's houses <laughs> alone. No. Just to go shill out, like go shell out some, uh, what it, like, it was like, not even like magazines that people wanted to read. <laughs> I remember I sold one guy a copy of what era subscription to Golf like Sporting Digest. News. <laughs> I always remember Golf Digest was a big one, which I'm sure there's plenty of people who like Golf Digest, but yeah. All right, so this Russian article from the scientists gave birth to the spaceship moon theory. So they speculated that an advanced alien species created a base within the moon to observe Earth. Which, I mean, if you want to believe in air, aliens, I mean, kind of would be smart, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of just watch from a distance. And, or they speculate that aliens created the moon spaceship somewhere else and then brought it to Earth to kind of just hang out and, I don't know, whatever they would do on there. I don't. Do you think there'd be, like, maybe it's like a party area, oh. like a resort for the aliens? Like, what, what do you think the aliens would be using the, the moon for if it was hollowed out? I don't know why they wouldn't just settle <laughs> on the Earth. I mean... Well, if they're so advanced, maybe they know that humans are kind of stupid and would be scared of them. Why would they give a fuck? <laughs> like, like I if don't you... don't know. That's a, that's a theory. I don't know. Like, do you not, like, walk on the sidewalk because the ants making their little hill in the cracks in the sidewalk might be scared of you? I'm like, sure somebody does. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about us. We're like ants to them. But what if they're an advanced intelligence and they they, like... You got to remember, maybe they don't think the same as humans do. Maybe they're like more compassionate than humans are. (laughs) I fucking hope not. (laughs) Anyway, so their hypothesis relies heavily on the suggestion that large lunar craters generally assumed to be formed from a meteor impact are generally too shallow and have flat or even convex bottoms. They hypothesize that small meteors are making a cup-shaped depression in the rocky surface of the moon while the larger meteorites are drilling through a rocky layer and hitting the armored hull underneath underneath so basically are you following that like the reason the craters are aren't bigger is because they can't penetrate because it has such a hard metal shell around if there's like a space station in there what do you think you know what i'm saying it's kind of makes you think right i mean a little bit um, I imagine that those craters that they're talking about are being filled in. Could by, be, you know. See, it could be that, or it could be maybe like the the moon really is made of like solid metal, and like it can't can't penetrate. Like if an asteroid hits the Earth, like it's kicking up dirt and shit, right? Like it's not as solid if it, if it's like it's not as solid as metal or whatever. So there's actually an asteroid, there's a strike, a meteor strike, on the underside of the moon. Um, And it was so big that it actually created waves that you can still see. Um, Basically, if if the moon (laughs) would have been tilted, like, up a little bit, you wouldn't see a face of the moon. We would actually see almost like what looks like an eyeball on Hmm. the underside of the moon. Well, that's if you want to believe what NASA's telling you. Yeah. I'm not believing it. Allegedly. You can, I've never seen it. You can but. trust these scientists all you want, Phil. I'm not buying it, all right? With their PhDs <laughs> and their cocaine sex parties. And... So another thing is the moon comprises mainly of chromium, titanium, and zircon. I think it's zirconium. I actually looked these up and they're just metals, basic mm-hmm. ass metals. But what the thing is, is that a lot of this, these chemi- these elements... A lot of people think it's kind of weird why they're on the moon. I believe I heard that the moon actually has like 10 times the amount of titanium that the Earth does. Um, which, if you know, titanium is actually like a super valuable metal. Mm-hmm. Super good metal. So, um, you think someone should get up there and mine it, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if it was, like, when we get to the point where 
it's easy to like bring it back. Mining, it's easy. You're right. Bringing right, it back, that's right. the that's a tricky part. Think if they brought all that titanium back, how cheap would razors be? <laughs> They would probably go up a dollar. Like shit <laughs> like, shit razors. We have an overabundance of titanium, but for some reason, shit razors are now sixteen dollars a razor. Considering now. how rare and valuable <laughs> titanium is, it's amazing that we like shave our faces with it. <laughs> You'd think they would just say like, "Here's plain steel. It's gonna rust. Deal with it." I imagine you know? it's kind of like diamond saw blades, where it's just like a tip of it, just like a slice of it on the end of a razor blade or whatever. I could be wrong. Mm. I don't know. I actually am lazy and I use an electric shaver, so. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> now, the other thing is that um, rocks they have found on the moon are as old or older than Earth. Now, that's legitimate. Um, obviously, that could just be they haven't found old enough rocks buried on Earth or whatever. But it makes you wonder, how, why are rocks older or the same age as Earth? But then again, that could be in the theory that the moon came from another galaxy and is older, or if they're the same age as the Earth, it, they're shitted out or whatever. Well, it kind of makes perfect sense if you think about it, because the main theory right now mm. is the second planet hitting the Earth and the yeah. crust, for Earth's crust actually forming the Earth. Yeah. So... That would kind of make sense. Hmm. Um, it's the same rock. That's why it's as old as the Earth. And the moon doesn't really have um, geologic, like the how Earth has, like the plates kind of like yeah, going yeah. above, under, or crashing into. Yeah. It doesn't really have a mechanism well, if to you, form. If new you rocks. believe that. If you allegedly. <laughs> it doesn't really have a, a way for like new rocks to be formed. Yeah. Kind of everything that's on the moon either was already there or meteorites brought it there. We should let everybody know you're in the camp heavily that the moon came from another place, right? Like you like that more than the earth shit it out. That the earth, that the moon came from another place. Like, an, like the, the moon hit the earth and then got stuck there. That's the one. Oh you yeah. The planet there. X. Yeah. Planet yeah. X hit okay. earth and then the moon, the moon was formed out of the crust. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the Phil's one I believe. theory. That's, that's Phil's Theory. Allegedly. <laughs> okay, allegedly. If we we're going to believe in NASA, I still think they're lying. Um, so, in 1976, George H. Leonard gathered a number of NASA photographs of the actual lunar surface and published them in, quote, Someone else is on the moon. <laughs> Leonard claimed that huge alien machinery was visible in the published photographs. However, readers in general haven't been able to discern it. Um, I tr I swear to God, I tried to look at these pictures. It just looks like a bunch of grainy pictures of the moon. Um, obviously, in 1976, their photoshopping skills weren't on point. But I think Mr. Leonard's just trying to either sell his book or he's just trying to make something out of nothing. I don't know. What do you think? I have seen conspiracy videos <laughs> where they ha they talk to uh, former NASA um, picture editors, basically, these people who were paid. Stanley to, Kubrick. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick. Was, <laughs> he was sitting at a desk and in his little fucking cubicle, yeah, washing out <laughs> pictures of the moon. No, it was it was their little minions were sitting at a desk, basically, like, <laughs> you know, like painting all these little pictures mm. of the moon and, mm. you know, painting over the, the mega structures that are there and. Like, all of the little satellite dishes that, of course, aliens on the moon would use, you know, like we were using at the time. Yeah, yeah. They would paint over those and make them look like rock <laughs> structures. Why are they lying to us, Phil? <sighs> I don't know. They just... It's about money. It's always about money. <laughs> power. It Trace it back to power. <laughs> Never a straight answer. We ain't believing you, you sons of bitches. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, I actually thought was kind of interesting... Um, the Zulu tribe of South Africa. So the Zulu shaman, Credo Mutwa, the Zulu legends believe the moon to be hollow and the home of the Python or Hitari, a race of intelligent extra extraterrestrials. The legend states the moon was brought here hundreds of generations ago by two brothers, Wawain and M Mpantku. Sorry if I can't pronounce your name right, reptilian man. Uh, who were the leaders of these reptilian extraterrestrials? These two were known as the Water Brothers, and they both had scaly skin like a fish. 
This tale is very similar to the Mes Mesopotamia and Sumerian accounts about the two chief brothers, Enlil and Enki, lords of earth, lords of the earth. Credo continues telling the Zulu legends of how Waunane and Pataku, Panku, stole the moon in the form of an egg from the, quote, great fire dragon and emptied the yolk <laughs> until it was hollow. That's kind of neat. Yeah. If the, if the moon was a giant egg, I guess. They then rolled the moon across the sky to the earth, with, which brought about cataclysmic events on this planet that ended the, quote, golden age of the past. The arrival of the moon and the reptilians changed everything on Earth. It modified the Earth's rotation and angle. The Earth turned over on its axis and we we were or were upside down, as the legend states, and brought more power, powerful tidal systems that were once much more calm. Women did not menstruate before the moon arrived. Hmm. But in their legend, so, okay, they're bringing that up again. So basically, they're saying that According to the legend, the serpent lords or gods, whatever you want to call them, brought the earth here, cracked it open like an egg, hollowed it out. They live in there because they did this. This changed everything on earth, made the tides rise, made uh, crazy earth events. Women started menstruating. I feel like the women menstruating versus the tidal systems is like a night and day difference. Um, but some, for some reason, they think that happened. What do you think about um, their ancient legend. It's interesting that they say, like, the Earth flipped on its axis. Yeah. Because, uh, like, scientists, if you believe them, <laughs> so allegedly, they say, like, the Earth has flipped on its axis mm. before. Okay, do you, um, are you, you, are you saying flipped or are you saying switch polarities? Switch polarities. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, I don't know if they actually think that the Earth, like... I know if it wouldn't flip in an instant, because if no. it flipped in an instant, the whole thing would probably <laughs> break apart. Probably. Like, all the plates would just immediately, there'd be earthquakes everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, I mean, they bring up reptilians too, mm -hmm. which there's a lot of, well, reptilian. I if I, if we're, I remember your boy, uh, David Eichen from the reptilians, I think he's really, he really likes this. Mm -hmm. This tribal legend, and obviously this tribe's like super old, so. And I do know I've heard of the moon being like broken open and like its yolk coming mm -hmm. out on ancient aliens. Uh, oh like yeah, some episode of ancient yeah, aliens. Yeah, it's seen. probably this tribe then. Yeah. it's kind of fun. That's kind of fun, honestly. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like you keep using the orange peel thing. Yeah. How how much cooler would the Earth be if it was like? Had a giant orange peel around it. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. That'd be fun. <laughs> anyway, one of the latest to make the staggering claim was Scott C. Warning, editor of UF Sightings Daily. <laughs> he claimed to have found proof of the moon being hollow on Google Moon Systems, which allows users to explore its surface online in the same way Google Earth does. I didn't even actually know that existed. Yeah, I didn't know either. I did see at work they had Teslas in there, and you can, like, the the touchscreen in there, you can, like, um, watch the Mars rover. Mm. It's kind of neat. I mean, it loses its little charm after about two minutes, but it's kind of neat initially. Yeah. In a blog entitled Shadow Structures, Proof of the Hollow Moon Theory, he wrote, Welcome to the shadow structures of the Earth, Earth's moon. These are large structures hidden in the shadows of the dark sides of the moon and polar regions. The structures are proof that the moon is actually a hollow space station created by ancient aliens long before Earth was even created. Look at the high perfect detail of the surrounding area and you will know that it is not pixelation, but 100% authentic structures found hidden within the shadows. All I did was add a smidgen of light to the photos and the rest is the moon. Well, sir, you can't be editing any photos if you want to be calling it proof. He also said they have no bloody clue where the moon came from and it shouldn't and it shouldn't be by physics be there. The Earth not only has a satellite, but is it is a giant satellite. Some scientists don't talk about the planet moon relationship, but a planet planet relationship. The moon is actually bigger than Pluto. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Okay. That's part of the reason why Pluto got downgraded. Oh, poor Pluto. Yeah. Bring it back. It's it's back now, right? No. It's not they, they're cocking it again. Neil deGrasse Tyson won't allow it. <laughs> come on, Neil. If you're going to 50-50 everything, then come on. 
And then we get the Hollow Moon. This is what I'm saying, and others have said it. It is a hollowed out planetoid. So, um, first thing, Mr. Scott warning, uh, I'm sorry, I love UFOs, but if you're an editor of UFO sightings daily, I don't know. Don't take it too serious. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, if you're the editor of, <laughs> is that a magazine, like a web magazine? It's a blog. It's a blog. blog. It's a blog. <laughs> yeah, you might be a little bit biased. <laughs> if you're... But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess... He's maybe trying to say where the aliens came from. I don't know. If you legit, like, were... Okay, so if you were watching, like, we were talking about that moon, um, the little kind of, like, camera that watches the moon, the mm. little kind of, like, the, the satellites that, like, like how Google Earth, it's like Google Moon or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. If you were watching that, and as you were watching it, you saw, like, bay doors open up to the moon, and you had proof of that... <laughs> Okay, that's something. Yeah. But if you have, like, a picture of a dark spot on the moon, and when you added light to it, something happened, like, mm. I don't know about that. Yeah. I mean, the pictures I look, like, you can go to his site and look at the pictures, and they're, like, really hard to look at because they're, like, tiny-ass little pictures, but maybe you can see something. I don't know. So, we've gotten the experts, right? I want to go with an amateur expert now, a Reddit user by the name of Murray. <laughs> Maureen Sedai. Finally, so, <laughs> it's about goddamn time. We're getting with people more on our level yeah. here. So in a Reddit thread about the hollow moon theory, this is what he said. So here's my hollow moon theory. It was the spaceship that the Martians took to find a new planet, Earth, when Mars became uninhabitable. Joe McMoneagle, McMoneagle, okay, saw them in a spaceship when he was remote viewing Mars from Project Stargate. We'll probably actually cover that, too. That's really neat. Do you remember Project Stargate? I've heard a little bit about it. Uh, no. Basically, the CIA um, got these people who were allegedly psychic or could remote view, and apparently they went back in time, and he could see the surface of Mars when aliens were living on it. Yeah, I also have a creative mind, so <laughs> cool. I'm just saying, we're Project Stargate will come eventually because that's a awesome, it's fucking awesome yeah, story. That is that sounds cool, actually. So he continues with: there are ancient le legends of a time before the moon. This would explain why there are so many odd things about the moon. Not saying I 100 percent believe this is true, just something I thought uh, he has thought about. Mm. So, um, I guess he's kind of keeping it within a little bit of rationale of what he thinks or like what he's speculating. He's kind of doing the same thing we're doing. We're just throwing, we're spitballing, we're throwing shit out there. We're just seeing what sticks. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's a good reasoning for like, if there's a spaceship, what was a the spaceship there for? You don't yeah. make a spaceship for no, for no apparent reason. And he's kind of adding in the humans used to come from Mars mm -hmm. theory to... Well, not humans, aliens. Aliens. Right. Okay. Well, they would be technically, yeah. Yeah, aliens. whatever. But, yeah, I mean, he, he's kind of, like, got a little good little theory going on. Mm. Like, there's a reason for the moon being here. Mm -hmm. So... The thing, I, through all my research of the hollow moon, I've realized that it just keeps snowballing into, like, other conspiracy theories get wrapped into this one. Because you have the hollow moon. Then you have... Um, like we're aliens from Mars initially. Then you have some people believe that aliens counterbred with humans so their race could survive. And that's what we are. And it just like keeps snowballing and shoving shit in there. And it's kind of, kind of wonky, but, uh, everyone's looking for their meta conspiracy. Right. Yeah. Now the next few things, um, I'm going to talk about, um, this, the Chinese city of Chengdu has proposed the construction and, su and subsequent launch of an artificial moon into its orbit in order to replace the city's streetlights with more a more powerful light source. The city is calling the project a illumination satellite and is planned to launch in 2020. You ever heard of this? No, I haven't. I, I thought it was kind of neat. Um, apparently, they don't necessarily have the government's approval, but they're going to try it. So allegedly, or apparently in Russia... In 1990, they actually did this, and the problem was it didn't emit as much light as moonlight did, so it didn't really work out. Maybe a 30-year advancement, maybe they can actually 
make it work, but... Um, so would they just have the satellite geosynced above their city? That's what it sounds like. Oh, cool. So it just shine light down, which uh, I guess if they could do that, that'd be really neat to see, but God, you'd need a bright fucking... Well, I mean, maybe if you can put something that can take up the sun's Reflect light... Reflect the light. ...and bring it down. Yeah. That'd be really fucking neat, wouldn't it? Uh-huh. Now, yeah. the the other thing that I found is something called... Let me make sure I have the name right. Now, they have something that I found called Moon Express. It's a new company. <laughs> Any guess as to what they want to do? Ooh. Um, <laughs> well, obviously, they want to send mail back and forth between the uh, hollow moon <laughs> aliens uh, to earth right right you know? they're gonna they're going back to snail mail with them yeah um no what apparently what this is this is a private company who has i think they received money from google for this and what they're gonna do is their plan is to send ships up there and start mining the moon and when i was reading through their website it seems like their ultimate goal is to make transportation easier for people and like this is actually happening in the, like the near future and it's kind of neat um obviously like we said there's a shitload of titanium on the moon so i'm sure they want that yeah a lot of conspiracy theories will conspiracy theorists i should say will are saying hey they're kind of surprised the government's letting them do this because what if they're going to uncover the secrets the government's been hiding from us yeah. Or what if they see uh, the alien bases mm -hmm. that also supposedly exist mm -hmm. on the moon? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I guess that's happening, which is kind of neat. Um, their website's actually like really cool. If you check it out, just go to moonexpress.com or whatever. It's really neat to look at. But anyway, so we're going to, we're going to just kind of make our way here. Basically through all of this, the theories that people lean on of why the moon has to be hollow is the age of the rocks mm -hmm. that make it mysterious. Um, some of the rocks on the moon are magnetized, kind of weird. Um, they believe that there is water on the moon underneath the surface, I believe. They kind of think that's there. Um, the moon has heavier elements resting on the surface that can't sink beneath the surface of the moon. The moon's surface is actually a lot harder than they actually believe. And obviously the main one is why was the moon ringing when it got hit? Those are kind of the main things that make people wonder. So let's round this out, Phil. What, in in your opinion, do you give any credence, credence to this? Or do you just think this is just people trying to make up more shit? Well, I mean, one of the things that you didn't mention, which hmm. I just kind of thought of was... <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> So the only reason why I think that the Earth or the Moon might be a satellite, like put there, is it's just too perfect. Like yeah. I already mentioned, yeah. how we only see one face of the Moon because it its spin and its rotation is perfect. Mm -hmm. Also, um, whenever you see a um, solar eclipse, you notice that like the Moon fits inside of the Sun right. perfectly. Right. That is because the moon is a thousand times closer to the earth than the sun, but the sun is a thousand times bigger than the moon. Right. That's why when they go in front of each other, it's perfect. Right. So that's very, it's, it's odd. Yeah. Like it's odd that they fit together so perfectly. So here's the thing. Okay. Let's, let's just, let's spitball, let's put our hats on for a minute. Mm -hmm. If it's that perfect and why would they purposely make it so it blocks out the sun occasionally? I have no idea. <laughs> it's just an odd coincidence that I'm like, it's just when things, things in nature line up that perfectly, yeah. it's, it's odd. I mean, so before we were doing this, I was actually listening to one of my favorite podcasts, last podcast on the left, talking about the hollow moon. And they actually talked about this. And I think they brought up a good point is that as humans, we, it's very hard for us to like, Except the fact that the galaxy is just chaos, and sometimes chaos can have coincidences. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah, it obviously is very weird that it matches up perfectly like that. But you know what? Maybe it's just just things just line up just perfectly. It's kind of like with assassinations, like JFK. They yeah. think that so many people believe that JFK's assassination was a conspiracy <laughs> because people always want to draw these right. red lines, right? The str the red string, right? Problem is, sometimes shit just happens. <laughs> it's just a, honestly, it's just a it's a dice roll, right? So, and the other thing, 
when I was kind of, obviously it's all a theory about how the moon got there, but they think, let's say it was either like you, you said it hit the earth, like it didn't start out round, like it was, they think it was flat or oval and slowly while it kept rotating, it became that perfect circle or whatever. So, I mean, that could be, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, through this whole thing, regardless if I believe the hollow moon actually exists or not, I've learned that the moon is, even though it just, just looks like a big gray thing in the sky, like, it's actually really interesting. Have you ever looked through it? Like, looked at it through a telescope? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's super. Like, you look at it through a telescope. Like, with your, you know, see it, like, with a, your eyes. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's really interesting. It is. Like, it's, all, you see all the detail and... It's... That's the other thing, too. Like, the coincidences thing, Earth's moon is unique to any of the other moons in this galaxy. Right? Like, how was it? The moon... Is, our moon's only shape like that. Our moon is bigger than any of the other ones. Like, ours, I believe rotates uniquely compared to any of the other ones so just kind of weird right yeah it doesn't um i don't just I, how perfect it is yes, like we were talking yes. before like how it has this like very predictable everything's mm -hmm. very predictable mm -hmm. and the size i mean the thing about it being spherical uh there's a certain size that a mass has to be to where it's spherical. Like yeah. most asteroids are potato shaped. There is one asteroid. I th I think it's just one called Ceres that's spherical. Hmm. So being spherical is not, you know, that's a size thing. But yeah, just the the way it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that it's you know it's, it's different it's way, from the way it is. Way different than any of the other moons on any of the other planets. That's what they're saying. Yeah. So, uh, which is kind of weird, but again, coincidences. Um, we pro I wonder if we'll ever really know. Probably not by the time we all die, but uh, it's kind of neat to think about. So, I'm going to give my two cents. I, I highly doubt that the moon's hollow, and I highly doubt <laughs> aliens are hiding in there or whatever. I obviously believe in aliens, but I don't know if they have their own little dusty darts, <laughs> Death Star floating around our planet. Although it would be a good vantage point for them, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think the moon's just just a weird thing. Yeah. Just a weird thing out there. <laughs> just the floating around, chilling, not doing anything. The science fiction writer in me would love it for one day for just the moon to like... The spaceship inside the moon, the Death Star, to like yeah. shake off all of that crap and like reveal itself to us that it's and not just this, take off. Yeah, just take off. Like all of our tides just go to fucking hell. <laughs> they finally saw that uh, Pittsburgh existed, and they're like, "We're getting the fuck out of this planet, dude." Yeah. No, but uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I know this episode's a little bit more nerdy than usual, but yeah, I think the moon's just fascinating. It is going to be sweet in like 50 years. They're going to have people living on the moon, probably. Of course, 50 years ago, they said this. Yeah. In the, in the 40s, they were saying that people were going to be living on the moon in the, a few years. So, <laughs> I would love to visit. I think that'd be so cool. I would love to visit for about five minutes. Then I'd be like, <laughs> all right. You know, the thing about it is people want to live on Mars. People want to live on the moon. The Earth is like. It's not made for us. We were made for the moon or the earth. You know, like we, <laughs> yeah. we grew up here. We evolved here. It's, it's perfect for us. And if you don't like the part where you live, if you don't like Pittsburgh, move. I mean, fucking, <laughs> I put it on the, I put it on Instagram every week. Hashtag leave Pittsburgh. Should if we... you don't like where you're at, get out, you know, <laughs> let's move Pittsburgh to the moon and call it a day. What if the moon if we start populating the moon, would they eventually have to locate, relocate a NFL team to there? <laughs> I think, hmm, that's a very good point. Well, you know, the problem is gravity would work differently there. Hey, so, they don't seem to care about Denver's air atmosphere or any of that, or like the cold weather versus the hot weather. Or the fact that Green Bay's a fucking ice house. <laughs> yep, yep. They don't care about none of that. You got to play where you got to play. Playoff hopes go there to die. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now if our fans want to email us and encourage phil to become the next hg wells where can they do that that would be uh <laughs> that'd be great i'd love to hear from you guys <laughs> get a hold of us at subliminal d podcast at gmail.com also you could get a hold of us at subliminal deception on instagram uh we got over 
I think we're getting close to 325 <laughs> followers now, so we're creeping up there. <laughs> Every day we get a couple. So right. And we get really good. We've gotten a, a few really good uh, messages from yeah. some fans. Yeah. So, love it. Yeah, love t- to get non-spam fa- uh, <laughs> mail. So Yeah, all you porn people, leave, a, leave Phil alone. Only talk to him about cool shit. So, also, all we ask is that you take a few minutes out of your day to leave us a five-star review on iTunes. I know people are slowly doing it, and I know it's a pain in the ass, and I know we all hate Apple, but uh, you do that for us. We would love you forever. Helps the show grow. Helps us keep ambitious to keep doing this, so uh, thank you, guys. Um, I Actually, we'd love to hear if you actually think the moon's hollow or not. Um, I'm kind of, I'm going to start asking people what they think, because it's not, it's a it's good icebreaker question, I think. First date question. Yeah, first date. <laughs> you sit down, shake each other's hands, maybe give a little hug, <laughs> sit down, order a drink. First thing up, what do you think about the moon? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'll base the entire date based off what they say. So yeah. anyway, that's going to, we're kind of sweating in the studio here, so we're going to get the fuck out of here. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.